do you experience a thing whenever you ride the LRT? Well, me too. Our friend Mario is also wondering why his body moves that way whenever the LRT suddenly moves or stops. Well, that is not because the driver is reckless, but there is a scientific explanation behind it. That is why we will be helping him understand why our body moves forward whenever the LRT suddenly stops and why our body being pushed backward whenever the LRT suddenly moves forward. Are you ready for your next ride? I am Jamel De La Paz, your lead investigator for this case 1.1 entitled Riding with you in your very first episode of how to be a scientist, a journey where science is the key. While having our ride, let me remind you of our objectives. You should be able to investigate the amount of force applied and the mass of the object to the amount of changes in the object's motion. Specifically, you should be able to define inertia and relate to mass and explain the different applications of the force of motion in real life situation. Take note of the following terminologies. We are now heading to our school and still have an hour before we get there. For the meantime, let us put your skills into a test. An object that is at rest or in motion with constant velocity, the forces are balanced. When the object accelerates, whether moving slower or faster, there is a change in the state of motion. Therefore, the forces are unbalanced. You have to determine whether the forces acting on the following objects are balanced or unbalanced. Game na ba? Game! Number 1. The flower vase on the table. Correct. The forces are balanced. Eh, eto. Galing eh. The forces are unbalanced. How about this? The dog is running. Excellent. The forces are unbalanced. How about this? Mm -hmm. The forces are balanced. It is very important to hold on to the rail so that you can prevent yourself from being out of balance. Going back to our case, the loss of motions were developed by Sir Isaac Newton. 
Washington. He intended to use this laws to explain why objects behave that way in the most scientific way. And the first law of motion he developed was the law of inertia. The law of inertia states that an object that is at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted by an external force. Imagine this glass of water you put on the table. This glass of water is at rest and the forces are balanced. But if someone picks it up or moves it, an external force will act upon it. Therefore, the forces are unbalanced. An external force that acts upon an object makes the object move. An external force that acts upon an object that is in motion with constant velocity makes the object slow down or stop from moving. Without an external force, this object will stay at rest or in motion as stated in the first law of motion. And don't forget to drink water. Let us understand its common application by doing this simple activity entitled the coin drop. And this is what are you going to do. What an exciting game! You can play this along with your family members and try to teach them the science behind the game. For sure, they will enjoy it and they will learn at the same time. That explains why our body moves forward when the LRT suddenly stops and why our body being pushed backward when the LRT suddenly moves forward. Wait! There is more. There is a factor that affects the object's inertia, and that is the mass of the object. Let us find out how the mass of an object affects the object's inertia. Let us put your skills into another test. Determine which of the following objects has the greatest mass. A. 10 kilograms of rice or B 5 kilograms of sugar How about letter C 3 kilograms of salt or is it letter D 1 kilogram of flour mm -hmm. Your answer is correct Letter A 10 kilograms of rice This time you have to determine which of the following given has the greatest inertia. Is it A. 10 kilograms of rice B. 5 kilograms of sugar Letter C. 3 kilograms of salt Or letter D. 1 kilogram of flour Mm-hmm your answer is correct. The object with the greatest inertia is letter A, 10 kilograms of rice. Determine which of the following objects has the greatest mass. A. 
3 kilograms of soil. B. 4 kilograms of paper. C. 5 kilograms of rock. Letter D. 6 kilograms of feather. The correct answer is letter D. 6 kilograms of feather. How about which of the following objects has the greatest inertia? Is it A. 3 kilograms of soil. B. 4 kilograms of paper. C. 5 kilograms of rocks. Or letter D. 6 kilograms of feather. Again, your answer is correct. The object with the highest or greatest inertia is letter D, 6 kilograms of feather. I hope you can see how the mass of an object is related to its inertia. Let me give you more. Determine which of the following objects has the least mass. A. A teaspoon of water. B. A cup of water C a pail of water or D a drum of water excellent your answer is correct the object with the least mass is a teaspoon of water determine which of the following objects has the least inertia a teaspoon of water B a cup of water C a pail of water or D a drum of water very good your answer is again correct the object with the least inertia is letter A a teaspoon of water based on your answers how is the mass of an object related to its inertia? A. The greater the mass of an object, the greater the inertia, and vice versa. Or letter B. The lesser the mass of an object, the greater the inertia, or vice versa. Mm. Very well said. Your answer is correct. How is the mass of an object related to its inertia? The greater the mass of an object, the greater its inertia and vice versa. Yes, we were able to explain to Mario why our body moved forward whenever the LRT suddenly stops and why our body being pushed backward whenever the LRT suddenly moves forward. Good job by the way! I am Jamel De La Paz, your lead investigator for this case 1.1 entitled Riding With You! Case Close. See you again on the next episode of How to Be a Scientist, a journey where science is the key.